uh, first review the questions that cover the purchasing cycle, and then we will talk about sales and distribution. Um, is there any questions from anyone before we start? Okay. Um, Okay, uh, we are now going to review the questions. So the first question say, what is the objective of the purchasing cycle? I'm hoping that you guys can, can uh, engage. I mean, I know that there are only two students, but I'm hoping that instead of me just like recording, because I can do that outside of class time without having either to disturb your schedule or mine. So um, what, what is the purpose of the, of the purchasing cycle? Okay, I will get you started. Let me first um, pull up um, the slides so that you can see the questions while we are. Yeah, I yeah. Okay, can you all see what I've written on, on the board? Jude, do you have a question? Ah, oh, I've disabled. Okay, go ahead. Um, let me allow all of the tools for you guys. Okay, Jude, go ahead and ask the question. I was going to ask if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I, I did now. Okay. So you you wanted to answer that first question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I can answer the question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Basically, it's um for the company to be able to pay for goods and services. That have been authorized. Okay, so they they want to buy, and that's what I I don't hear streamline the purchasing cycle. By that I mean I want to shorten the time it takes to buy and pay from fr from the moment that I send a PO to the moment that I pay uh, the vendor. I want also to be able to monitor how the suppliers, uh, the services that the suppliers are, are providing. So I want to keep track of when did they deliver, 
that they deliver on the date or before the date that they have specified on their quotation or on the PO or on the sales order. I want to document all um, all all phases. So if if I'm uh, if I let's say I received something that I think was not what I ordered, what is it that I will be go back to? Come again, please. I think that the last part. My my question is: Let's say the vendor sent you a product that you did not order. How would you know whether it was what you ordered or not? Um, I will look. I will look at the. Um, other documents which are used in placing the order. Okay, very good. So you will go back and look at the purchasing order, the PO. Did I actually, yeah. is this what I sent the vendor? So, um, yeah. Okay, so when, when we talk about the objective of the purchasing cycle within SAP, we want to streamline it, which means I want to shorten the cycle. I want to use less resources. I don't want to use a lot of people in order to uh, receive, make sure that the goods received are actually what I uh, purchased, I want the system to check that automatically. Um, I want to make sure that only I pay to vendors that I receive goods from. I cannot pay before I receive. And I can only pay the amount on the invoice. I cannot pay over that amount. I may pay less, but not over. Why, when would I pay less? Well, why would you pay, pay less than the amount? Yeah. <laughs> That's a trick question. Yeah, it uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> you would pay uh, less if you have a clause in one of your contracts that says if they deliver late, there will be a penalty. Okay. So if they deliver after the time that you agreed on, then there will be a penalty and will, you will pay less than what is on on the invoice. Okay, a any okay. Other, is, is anything that else that anyone wants to add to, to that question, Dai? Yeah, I want to ask, um, pay less, is that like um, a um, pre-arranged decision? Yes, very good. It has to be specified in the contract. I cannot just like say, I'm going to take 10% because uh, you did not deliver on time. It has to be part of the contract that you signed with the vendor. So if the, if the contract has, usually they call it a clause. Like if something went wrong, if something uh, went wrong, then there will be a penalty on the vendor. Okay. And it's, you would have to specify if it's a 1%, a 2%, whatever, whatever is in the clause. All right. Okay. Anyone wants to add anything else? other than what we have on on the board. Oh. Okay, so we'll go to the next question. The next question says, um, what are the pre-purchasing documents that you, that you create? So think about it until I write it on, on the board. An offline agreement. So what are the pre-purchasing documents? Before I actually uh, request the vendor to send me goods, which is the PO, there are documents that we create before that. Michael, Tanya? Yeah, are you talking about an outline agreement? Uh, online agreement, is that what you said? An agreement, outline. an outline agreement. Okay, an agreement? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, that's not a pre-purchasing document. Okay. Before I, the agreement is actually a, a long-term relationship between the vendor and the company. 
saying we agree or the vendor says I agree to deliver the product uh, over a period of time, over one year, that every month I'm going to deliver that amount at that price. So it's actually a purchasing document, not a pre-purchasing. What would okay. be before I commit? An agreement also is a commitment. Okay. Michael, you want to say something? Yeah, exactly, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Basically, they are just like um legal uh, agreements. What? Well, we said the agreements are purchasing, are purchasing documents. They are not pre. When I'm okay. asking pre-purchasing, I'm talking about documents that would be created before you bind yourself, before you commit yourself. Okay, um, like a purchase, uh, like a purchase contract. Well, again, uh, a con once you have a contract, then that's binding. Okay. Okay, I'll get you started. Uh, what of them? Hmm? Um, purchase agreement form. You're trying to work around something that you have in your mind. You just want to say agreement. The agreement is a purchasing document. But a requisition, okay. a requisition is a pre-purchasing document. At that time, there is no commitment that the company will buy. What else? What other document do I have or do we create that is not binding, that is not a commitment? The purchase order form. No, a purchase order is a commitment. Because the purchase order is saying, okay. please send me these products. So it is, it is binding. Okay. Uh. Okay, so the, the, the requisition is a pre-purchasing, the RFQ is a pre-purchasing, and the last one is the quotation. Well, the quotation. Okay. The quotation, I think that comes from the vendor. Say that again? The quotation, does it, it comes from the vendor, right? Yes, and I'm going to explain that now. But I'm, I'm saying that these are documents that are created when you are doing the purchasing cycle, and they are pre-purchasing documents. They do not commit you as a company to buy from the vendor. Why do I create the requisition, the first one? Um, okay, the, the reason is I want to get approval for the purchase. So I am an employee, I want to buy a new laptop. I go to the dean and I say, can I buy a new laptop because my laptop is old, it's very slow, I cannot run SAP on it. The dean may say, yes, you can. But he is not enough. His approval is not enough. The purchasing department may say, no, we already have computers. You can use one that is in storage, for example. The IT department can say the same. So, Organizations have their own processes. If you want to buy a specific material, they may require the approval of your supervisor, along with purchasing department, along with the a specific a specialized department, what we call the purchasing group. Are we all now squared on the requisition? Yeah, yeah, we're clear. Okay, so it is to get approval. You may have to get approval from several layers or several um, units within the organization. What is an RFQ? That's basically to a request for a quotation okay. from the different vendors. Okay, so that's a request for quotation sent to whom? Who 
do we send Dara Q2? Um, I think Sorry? Who do we send it to? I've already answered the question. The request those. for quotation is sent to three or more vendors. Why do I send it to yeah. more than one? So that you can, you'll be able to select the best quotation for the company. Very in good. In terms of price. So you may specify that you need more than one to prevent fraud. Why? Because there are some people who have friends that also are suppliers. So to, to prevent that from happening, you, if, if I get only one quotation, then I may say, um, okay, that's the, that's, that's the only one that I can buy from. And then between you, between me and that person, I would say, increase the price by 10%. Let, let me uh, mute that uh, phone. Hold on one second. So, um, so we want to prevent fraud because in, 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 it happens that people may buy from their relatives. They, they buy from their friends. Of course, the organization would not be aware of who is related to you. They are only aware of first degree relatives, your wife, your children, but anything other than that, it becomes very hard unless like they have the same last name and they would be able to track it. So over a period of time, yes, they can find out. But from just one uh, transaction, it may be difficult, or it, it has to have someone to alert the organization that this is fraud. So to prevent fraud, they say, okay, we have to have at least three quotations from three different vendors. What do they do with these quotations? Um. You mean what they do with the yes. quotation, right? Yes, yes, go ahead. Yeah, the quotation basically is used by the company to, yeah, the quotation is used by the company to evaluate the different vendors on what they can offer and at what Very price. Very good. So um, they evaluate the quotations based on what? There are three things that you can evaluate the, the quotations on. Very good. Um, price. Um, is it ta delivery, delivery price? Yeah. Yeah. And? Um, Not quantity, quantity because we only accept whatever we oh, order. Sorry. So if we ordered 60, we will accept 60. They cannot give us more, they cannot give us less. If they give us less, we only pay for whatever they deliver. Um, so quality is important, not quantity. Quality is important because if they send us something that is um, it, it, not in good quality, is not acceptable, then we have to return it back. And that's why we have a receiving department. The receiving department makes sure that whatever is sent by the vendor, is of a, an acceptable quality. It is not um, defaulted. Okay, so these are my three, three purchasing documents, requisition, request for quotation, and quotation. We said that an RFQ and, uh, and quotations are both the same. Good afternoon. I think. Is this how you pronounce your name? Yes, indeed. Okay. So, Abdul Fattah, we were just talking about the, or going over the questions that I posted on announcement. And the second question was, what are the pre-purchasing documents? And we said that we, a requisition, we have to create to get approval for the purchase. It's not binding at that point. And then, I create a request for quotation that I send to vendors, and we said we send it to multiple vendors 
to prevent fraud, to prevent someone from just getting their wife or their um, their children to sell to the organization at a higher price. <coughs> and then the quotations are sent. Uh, the RFQs are sent to the vendors, and the vendors respond by sending back quotations. The the S the SAP can evaluate the quotations on price, delivery, and quality. Last time I told you that only <coughs> old suppliers, suppliers that you already have a relationship with, you can evaluate them on delivery and quality. But if it is a new supplier, the only thing that you can evaluate them on is price. You don't have previous deliveries to see did they deliver on time or not. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and, and the same uh, thing regarding quality. Any other thing? Anyone wants to add anything before we move to the next one? <coughs> Excuse me. No. Okay. So the next question, guys, says, what are the controls that are set up in the purchasing cycle to prevent fraud? A balance sheet. Think uh, about it before. I, I'm going to write the question on the board. So let's okay. take a minute to think about it. There are several things. We have already talked about some of them. Um, we have statements of cash flow. Okay, before that even, like at the very beginning, uh, people, well, think again, people are motivated. They want um, to buy things for themselves, irrespective of whether it is needed by the organization or not. To prevent that kind of fraud, organizations say you cannot buy before you create a requisition. Requisition must be approved by several individuals to make sure that this is something that the organization needs. You're not just like paying a favor to someone else, so I'm friends with the dean, the dean can buy me anything. No. Um, as I said, the way to prevent it is that you create the requisition. Requisition must be approved by several. Uh, layers within the organization. Okay, what what else is preventing fraud? Think about before even committing to purchasing. The the, the um document to show the flow of cash. I didn't hear you. As a document to show the flow of cash. Like a statement of cash flow. Okay, I'm I'm not sure I can I can hear you, Michael. Um I I keep on hearing document is something of cost. So I'm, I'm not sure. This is this is you talking. Um I was talking about like a balance sheet. Uh, the balance sheet by itself, I mean, like it shows the assets and the liabilities, and it has to, they both have to be balanced. But there is nothing to prevent someone from committing fraud. I mean, like they can increase the amount on the asset side and on the liability side, and that's it. But physically, let, let's say, for example, uh, it says that um, you have 25 computers, but you actually have 24. So on the balance sheet, I have 25, and on the liability side, I have to pay a vendor the price of 25, when in fact, I have 24. So balance sheet is a document that's generated by the system. We are thinking now of what SAP, how SAP prevents fraud in the purchasing site. So one thing is the system can be set to where a PO cannot be generated without a requisition. 
The requisition must be approved before you can generate a PO. Second thing, I cannot generate a PO without at least three quotations. So think along these lines. Or okay. What else inside of the purchasing cycle that would prevent fraud? Okay. Um, um, you're talking about something to prevent fraud before it is being executed, like um, having a document to show the count of count of delivery and so that you be able to pay for the exact amount of delivery. Is that is this something like that? Yes, yes, that's very good. Actually, before that, we can we can say that the PO that I will generate. must agree with or match, must match the requisition and the, uh, the quotation. Which means that if I'm, I'm going to generate a PO that says, or the, and I will send it to the vendor, it must have the same item that I have agree, uh, approval on. We said the requisition is to get approval. So they approved the max. But then I want to get a PC. Well, no, that, that, the system will not allow you to go and do that. If the requisition says that particular item, so the PO must have that same item. Another thing, we have, we reject quotations and we accept some. The price that's on the PO must be the same price as on the accepted quotation. It cannot be above that price. Are we all following? Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so if, if, if the requisition that got approved, say you buy a Mac, your PO must, say, must have the Mac on it. If the quotation that you approved has uh, the price of 1200 then the PO must have that same price. Okay, now, uh, now uh, next, next control. Uh, is that like a, a document to check the Before quality? Before that, I cannot accept anything. So my goods receipt must match what? No, not the, the quality, quality not yet. The goods received must match okay. the PO. Oh, so yeah, I must cannot accept the quality. any okay. good. As we said, yeah. I have to accept the goods on the PO. And before that, we said the goods on the PO must match the one on the requisition. And the price must match the quotation. Okay, so the goods receipt must match the PO. The invoice receipt also must match the PO. We, we, we put on the PO a certain price. I cannot get a, an invoice with another price. It has to be the same like the one we agreed on uh, on the PO. Before I can store the goods, now, quality assurance. So, again, I may have my friend and he has some defaulted computers and they want to sell it to the organization. But we have to have a receiving department that makes sure whatever I, whatever, um, I accept and I can pay for is of an acceptable quality. That it meets the quality standards that I set. So I have to have quality assurance. What is the last control? Um, 
delivery address. Delivery address. The delivery address? Okay. Um, yes, again, whatever delivery address you have on the PO would be the only one to receive uh, the goods. So you cannot deliver to another address. Yes. Okay. But now, the last, the very last um, control is that payment cannot be made except to whom? Except to whoever is authorized to receive the payment. Okay, I have to have a good receipt and an invoice receipt. So you cannot pay for goods that you have not received yet. And I cannot pay any amount there other than what's on the invoice. So the GRIR must be entered into the system before you can process a payment. SAP will not allow you to um, generate a payment, <coughs> to have an outgoing payment without the goods received and without the invoice receipt. In fact, the invoice cannot be generated without goods received. So you cannot invoice, you cannot enter an invoice for goods that you have not received. Are we all clear on that? Okay, I, I assume guys that um, everything is clear. Any, any other comments regarding that question? Now, a lot of the actual exam questions will come from these review questions. Um, they, they, we are not wasting time. Yes, I, I can go directly like to see, but I want to make sure that everyone is clear on the process. Because the very first exam, all you get is just you have a clear understanding of the processes that we have covered. We have to have a very clear understanding what's going on within the system. How is it that the system preventing fraud? What are the controls in there? What are the steps that we go through from start to finish and so on? I'll ask a question. Go ahead. Now, um, if I own a company and um, we discover that we have certain checks to put in place, which is different from these particular controls here. Can I create my own control? Can you please repeat it? Because I think Michael had his mic open at the beginning of your question, and I have to close it myself so that I can hear you. So if you don't mind repeating okay. your question. I was asking if. I can create my own control, which is different from um, these particular controls provided. Let's say, for instance, I have a company that, and we have our different challenges, okay, and these controls are not able to meet up with our challenges. Can I create my own personal control? Excellent, excellent question. Yes, you can. There is a lot of, of, um, of, of things. The, the, the system comes with a lot of configuration as we said, choices that you can make. If, the, if they are not part of what is listed as a choice, then it becomes very expensive for you because that means you have to, to write code. You have to have someone who knows about which is the language that SAP is written on in order to add it. But majority of the time, because we said that these systems are based on best practices, whatever control you want to add, to the ones on the slide, you will see, you will find as a selection. And all you have to do is just like include that selection. Did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. Okay. Now the next question says, when is the PO created? Okay, so um, here is the question. When is a PO created? I think it's... Um, 
is created after um, a particular quotation has been approved. Very good. Um, it is created after an acquisition is approved and a quotation has been accepted. Okay. I'm, I'm typing it, uh, typing the answer. Uh, Will I be able to create a PO without a requisition and without a quotation? No. Actually, you guys did that in the short exercise. In the short purchasing exercise, you created a PO right away. So what, when would I create a PO without a requisition, without a quotation? Is that possible? Okay, you guys actually answered that question at the beginning. And we said, yes, we can have um, a PO without a requisition, without a quotation, if it is referring to a sales agreement or a contract. I already have a contract, and the contract says that the vendor is going to deliver over a 12 year, a 12 month period. So every time I need to replenish, I'll just send the PO, and the PO is actually automatically generated by the system. Or the PO, I may have a sales agreement with the vendor. So I don't have a specific period, but the agreement says the price is good for a year. So it doesn't have to be 12 now deliveries at certain times. Uh, they can be uh, 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 like as, as uh, many as I want within that specific period. So that I don't have specific deliveries, I don't have specific quantities, I, all I have is just a price. Are we all squared now? Yeah. Okay, now the second part of the question, and again, please, when you're doing the exam, I always would have, I, I go, <laughs> sometimes I, I, I put A and B, but a lot of times some, I have a question that has two parts. If you forget the second part, you lose 50 points, 50% 50 of the points. Make sure that you answer all parts of your exam. What documents can be copied into a PO? Uh, the quantity. We're talking about documents. the quantity required. Documents. Oh, what document? Okay. So either I have a requisition that I'm going to copy into a. Um, into a PO or I have a quotation that I'm going to copy into a PO. People will say, okay, how come a requisition copied into a PO? Because I already, I have already dealt with that supplier before. I don't need a quotation. I have a requisition just for approval and I have, um, I have a price. So the, the requisition already have the price and the requisition already have the vendor. I have a sales agreement with that vendor. Like, for example, um, PSQ, they have an agreement with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. So anyone, anywhere in, at PSQ, in any department, they want to rent a car, they would go to Enterprise. They have, of course, to get an internal approval to rent the car. So I cannot just like go to Enterprise and say, I work for PSU, I want a car, and that's it, and expect PSU to pay. They would not say, I have to have a requisition, means the dean 
uh, must say it is okay for Karma to rent a car because she's going to a conference and going to present a paper under TSU name. It's now clear to everyone when a requisition can be copied into a PO without a quotation. If I have a sales agreement with that vendor and that sales agreement specify a particular price, it does not specify deliveries or uh, purchases at certain times. Anyone can purchase any time, but they have to have, um, they have, they only, the, the company will only honor the price in the sales agreement. Now, I may have several quotations and I have approved only one quotation. That quotation can be copied into a PO. So the documents that can be copied into a PO, either a requisition or a quotation. Anything else? Any clarification? Any any other thing? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what if the price in a in a quotation that was accepted is lower than the price in the requisition? Even better. <laughs> so the requisition is internal approval. The quotation okay. is what the vendor is what the vendor is requesting. So at the, if you have a quotation, the quotation will be copied into a PO. If you don't have a quotation and you have only a requisition, the requisition must specify a price and that price must be already in the system or in a sales agreement. You cannot just come with any price yourself. You have to have a referring document. So anything within SAP, either it is what we call master data, which means data inside of the system, the system already has saved the price for that particular product that you want to buy, or you have a document again entered into the system that you are copying the price from. You cannot just like enter any price because the vendor will say that's not binding. What's binding is on my quotation that I sent you. Okay. Any other thing regarding that question or shall we move to five? Yeah, let's move. Okay. Now again, it's very important that you ask questions because as I said, a lot of the questions that you will see on the test will be exactly what we are going over now. <clears throat> the next question is asking, how are quotations evaluated? And we have already answered that question a while ago, so we want to go over it very quickly. Yeah. Price. So I can evaluate on price. I can evaluate on quality. quality. And the last one. I think the last one is um, time delivery yes, time as so. Now, is it a bad thing to deliver ahead of time? No. Deliver ahead of yeah. time? Uh, it depends. So on what? If if um, they have um, they already made arrangement to receive the, the the product or they have some I mean they have provisions to receive it at that point. Okay. Remember, delivery means warehousing, means inventory, maintaining the inventory. That's cost for the company. The company don't want you to deliver any time. They want. And of course, most of you have heard that term before, what we call just-in-time. And it actually came from the, China, from the Japanese, just-in-time delivery. They want to, you to deliver when they need it. 
They don't want to maintain a large space for inventory. They don't want to keep track of the inventory because, again, it may uh, result in fraud or in, in, in a theft, and that's very expensive for companies. So you are evaluating uh, delivery on time. You don't want it ahead, way ahead of time, and of course you don't want it late. Anything else you want to add to question number five? No. Okay. Now, question number six says, what effect does the creation of a goods receipt have on the system? Same question regarding invoice receipt. So think about it until I copy it and paste it on the board. I don't know why that happened to the test. Okay, so what effect does the creation of a goods receipt have on the system? I enter a goods receipt that I have received goods. What do you think is affected? Uh, it does not allow fraud. No, I'm saying, what is it that is affected? Where will it reflect? Oh. Enter a good receipt. It, it changes something in the system. What is it that, that, that gets changed? It creates okay. a material document or so. Inventory. If I say I've received goods, then it should reflect on inventory. Okay. And of course, if it reflects on inventory, it also reflects on cost of inventory. Okay. How about the invoice receipt? Does that reflect on accounts? What will it reflect on? So I entered an invoice from uh, from a vendor. How will that reflect in the system, or what will what is going to change? Hey guys, accounting, accounts payable. Now, if I enter an invoice, that means I'm owing a vendor, and that will reflect on accounts payable. And it will also reflect on the vendor account. And that actually answers the, the next, or uh, brings us to the last question. What is the difference between accounts payable and vendor accounts? Which one of these appear on the general ledger? Accounts payable. Very good. So accounts payable appear on the general ledger. Um, so what is vendor account then? The vendor's account. Huh? What did you say? Yeah, I said vendor account. Where where will the vendor account be? We know the account payable is um, uh, 
is in the general ledger. I will see the accounts payable in the general ledger. How about the vendor account now? Where will I we, we, remember the account payable is an accumulation, is the sum of everything that I owe all my vendors, all my suppliers. Every one of them has a particular balance uh, with me, either credit, uh, well, it, it wouldn't be debit, but it's either a credit or a zero, a zero balance I, if I've paid everything. Now, where will the vendor account be? On accounts. I, I didn't hear you, you. What did you say? Now, the, the, the actual document, the exercise that you did over the weekend said that the vendor account will appear in the sub-ledger. So we have a general ledger that's an accumulation of all the accounts payable. But if I want more details, I can double click like you did in, in SAP and it takes you to the sub-ledger. And that would be specific accounts for each vendor. Are we all square? Yeah. Okay, so th this is all, these are all the questions that I want you to know about purchasing. If I, I think I've, I'm going to add two more questions since we have another um, eight minutes or so uh, mm -hmm. on uh, the documents that get created. What are the documents that get created uh, in, uh, in the purchasing cycle? Before we go to that question, I want to make sure no one has any questions or any concerns about the six questions that we posted on the announcement. Okay, so you're all you're you're all clear about the six questions. Now, if, if I may add two more, one is um, what are the documents created? In the purchasing cycle. I thought there were seven questions. Uh, what, the 6 and 7 came in one? Yeah, I thought it's 6 and 7. Yeah, 6 and 7 came together because we said that um, the, um, the AP, the account payable, uh, is in the general ledger. The vendor account is in the sub-ledger, and we have already talked about that in the invoice receipt. We said the invoice receipt will reflect on the account payable. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. You're welcome. The requisition. So the, the requisition, yes. Next. RFQ. The RFQ. Quotation. Now, remember, remember that in SAP, the RFQ and the quotations are one document. Oh, okay. So you have to be very careful, and that's why when you enter the RFQs and you send them to the vendors, when they came back as quotations, you just maintained the quotations. They are linked to the RFQ. So the RFQ has a okay. number six, five zeros, and then one two at the end. And then you you get a quotation from that same vendor. It became it, it is the same number six five zeros one two. RFQ and quotation has the same number. Are considered the same document. What else? Okay. Um. Purchase order. Yes. Goods receipts. Mm -hmm. Invoice receipt. Okay. And the last thing is payment. 
all of these are documents that have numbers within the system. You can retrieve any of these documents if you want, if you have their numbers or you have their date or who are they paid for or which vendor, which material. Different ways actually to retrieve that information from SAP. So th right. th that is one question. And another question would be, what is the process? So these are different. A lot of people, when I ask them, what is the process, they will list what you see in here. They will just write requisition, RFQ, quotation. They get actually one third of the grade. That's not a process. A process is a set of steps that you take in order to finish the, the, the business uh, cycle. Okay. So. So. I'm writing the question, what are the different steps that are that SAP perform within the purchasing cycle? So now when we're talking about yeah. a step, what are we talking about? What would be the very first step? First you you create and a requisition was. which needs to yeah. be approved. So when you create a requisition, it is actually sent to server based on how you set up the system. The system will send the requisition or will alert someone through email all the people that need to approve the requisition they get an automatic email from the system. Yeah. So that's the first step. Can someone help me with the second? You create an RFQ um, that would go out to the vendors and then they will send in a quotation, different quotations, after which um, um, a particular quotation will be, will be accepted based on um, the price, quantity, and delivery time. So once approved, once the requisition is approved, the purchasing department is alerted to enter the RFQ. Okay, when the quotations are received, the quotations are maintained, which means you go in to the RFQs and you you update them with the price from uh, the quotation document. The system evaluates the quotation, and we've already talked about that based either on price or um, or quality or delivery. Now you have to have a manager who approves it. So the manager approves one quotation. What do we do with that quotation? You create a copy of that word, which is copied into. Uh, a purchase order. Okay, now um, the the PO gets sent automatically again by the system to the uh, vendor on the quotation. Okay, now what's next? Then the good is um, is delivered to the company, 
after which a goods receipt and an invoice receipt is created. Okay, so when the vendor ships the goods, we enter a GR that must refer to a PO. You cannot just enter a goods receipt, any goods receipt. You have to refer to a PO. The system, if you remember the exercise, you remember it asks you what is the PO. So you have to refer to that PO. At that time, there is something pending within the system. If you enter a GR, you have to enter what? Inventory. Uh, invoice, not inventory, invoice receipt. So if I enter a GR, I must follow the GR with an IR, an invoice receipt. The last step is what? Payment. 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 Now, can, can the payment be generated automatically by the system without me having to enter a payment? Oh. I know you guys have a, have a class in, in uh, 10 minutes, so I don't want you to be late. The answer is yes, the system can generate a payment automatically. Um, it can be set to generate the payment based on the vendor profile. When you created that vendor, you said that the vendor should be paid within 30 days or within 60 days or within 90 days. So the system will make sure to send the payment because now payments are also um, electronic. So you, you just like send uh, like um, uh, what do they call it? Like a payment, an electronic payment. So uh, there is nothing that is in the mail or anything like that. The system can be uh, set to generate the payment uh, so that it abides by the agreement that you have with the vendor. If the vendor says you have to pay within 30 days, then the system is set maybe to pay within 20 days and so on. As soon as an invoice is received. That's, that's all for, for purchasing. Any questions before you leave, guys? No question from me. Okay. Thank you, Jude, very much for engaging and, and responding to the questions. I hope that all of you who are attending, at least, uh, and I appreciate your attendance anyway, uh, but I hope that you all engage, that you next time when I post the questions, please think about them before, before you come to class. Welcome. Very well. Okay. Thank you, so Mark. There, there are no questions, so I'm going to stop the recording, and um, I, I'll see you either uh, Thursday online or or next Tuesday, depending on what what we have to do.